This is A to Z, episode 129. Today's guest is local artist Inez Alvarez. It's like they're trying to be too meta. We're going to make them an offer they can't refuse. Much better. Yeah. You can, you can, can I buy you a drink. You can't can just not well, well, I mean, he did pick out somebody we know. We well, sidestepped the question. That you technology does not exist. I'm Aaron, here with my co-host as always, Zach. Hiya. Welcome to A to Z Podcast, where we sit down with the folks that make Southeast Texas a better place to live. If you're new to the show, thanks for checking us out. If you want to get in touch with us, shoot us a text at 409-206-2971. That's 409-206-2971. We want to hear from you. We want to hear what you have to say, your opinions, your views, anything going on in society or anything you want to comment on. We'll uh, put it up in the show and, and share it with everybody. Get at us. Get yeah. at us. Anyway, well, today we're talking to Inez. Uh, if you've lived in Beaumont, you've probably seen her work. She's done murals. She's done the electrical boxes. You know, like her work is all over town. And uh, <clears throat> basically we sat down and talked about how she got here and and, and uh, uh, the journey of becoming um, a full-time professional artist. That's right. And finding her own voice. You know, mm-hmm. it's a very interesting one. And I we hope you're going to enjoy it. So yeah. sit, sit back. Enjoy. Follow along with us, and we'll see you on the mid-break. First, some advertisements, some local happenings in Southeast Texas. Enjoy. And I still don't know how to do anything. So you you didn't do music at, at all. You just you just did art. Well, that's, that's what I was going to, I'm like, we should do this. Because it might be interesting. It might be, yeah. <laughs> or not. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it will be. Is the volume okay? Uh, yeah. Yeah? yeah. No, Sounds you're great. Okay. okay. So, right after we're talking about the guitar lessons and how mm-hmm. bad I am, <laughs> <laughs> I when I wrote a little biography, okay. uh, or a little artist statement, when I was young in Mexico, they gave me the option of either picking guitar or painting. Okay. And the idea was that I knew how to paint some and I have never held a guitar in my life, but I wanted to play guitar terribly, like I did. <laughs> but apparently I wanted to paint more than playing the guitar. So the biography says that, you know, she had a love for guitar and painting, but then she ended up choosing painting. And the biography continues, or the little statement says, until today she cannot play a note, a single note, <laughs> a chord. <laughs> so recently I went to my little statement and I changed that. I'm I like, now nah, she can chord. paint one or two chords. <laughs> She's like, I don't know, I can play the G now. Yeah, I can play the G update, really well. Update your artistic CV. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that, I'm trying to work on that, but... I'm glad to be here, guys. I don't know. We no, started with a really you. cool conversation at the beginning. Yeah. I, I hate that we missed that. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's really important to like get in here and just sort of uh, let it start flowing. Mm-hmm. And then now we're in that space where we yeah. can just, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And okay. they, uh, thanks for coming on because uh, you're the first interview we've done in this new space. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we looks... used to be over there in a much smaller room and now look at us. Yeah. yeah. It looks so beautiful. The table <laughs> is... Yeah. Like when I walk in, I'm like, ooh, AC. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, one thing that's like a lot different from this new space to the last space is the last space had a lot more personality. Mm-hmm. You know, we had a lot of art up. We had uh, a lot of local art and all that stuff. And we wanted it to be more accessible for anyone that wanted to use this space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it kind of like I miss the art, you know? Yeah. Uh, we had one of Chris Presley's pieces up and, yeah. and all that, you know. It's, and just a lot of weird random stuff too. Yeah, a whole lot of just random things from different episodes, pe- things people gave us, you know. it's. Uh, Do you take photographs of those walls? No. Well, we, we yeah. have them on video. Yeah. You know, we get yeah. some still shots or... Or anything like that. We, so it's I, I'll remember it fondly. But I like this space a lot more. I do too. Yeah. I want to. I'm gonna relate to you on that because at some point I did had a studio downtown, uh-huh. and it was full of personality and charm. Like I think the hardest part for me to move from the space was that everyone that went to my space was allowed to paint on the floor mm. or yeah. write a note or a little letter. We or, thought about getting white markers and letting people sign. You can, but then it gets out of control, just to let you know. (laughs) (laughs) But that was one of the hardest things for me because it was uh, sentimental. But what I did, I took photographs of that. Mm -hmm. So I have that, and it's okay to evolve. I think you guys are here, and it's so beautiful that the memory should be enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You know, it was good. What it lasted. That's, that's That's what art is. You know, it's like a snapshot in time. You know, sometimes it's not... 
supposed to, like the the purpose of it isn't to be you know eternal. Sometimes it's supposed to just be like a flash, yes, right? Yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and speaking on that, you know, you do great art. I've seen it all over town. It's all over town. All over town. It's uh, uh. So you started. Uh, let's see. What what did you what did you first do when you came here into town? Uh, you know, um, this is like a nice warm up for me. Mm-hmm. Um, my goodness, my stomach hurts a little just to think about it. Because <laughs> so, I know where you're at now. You have you have a big sprinter van. You got mm-hmm. murals all around town. <laughs> mm-hmm. So let's think about like where you were when you started. Oh, you're gonna love yeah. this. <laughs> Uh, Thursday, I'm giving a talk at the Elegante for Rotary Club. Okay. And I've been preparing for a month or so, at least trying mentally. And and I have to go back to, like, dig into stories that I really want to share. Mm-hmm. And one of the biggest things that I have that I, God, your story, your story, my story is not going to change, right? Mm-hmm. You're just going to keep evolving. And one of the things I mentioned in my speech is that my only hope is that I become a better storyteller. Mm. You know, okay. the story yeah. is the same. So to answer your question, when I first moved in, it was in 2000. Mm. I didn't speak a word of English. Every time I speak to someone, it's like, is this really happening? <laughs> you know? I told another cool story. Yeah. <laughs> someone told me the first time you dream in English is when you know English, right? The first it, time you dream in English. Dreaming. You dream in English, okay. yes. Wow. And I remember that one day I woke up crazy excited. I... I had a dream in English. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, I think I speak English. <laughs> Which, <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> yeah. it, it took me a while. It was difficult for me to learn English. Uh, but, so I go to high school here. I get the opportunity to meet a lot of people that were in the same place where I was. They were my age. They didn't speak a word of English. Mm-hmm. But what happened to me was that I started a job at a restaurant here in Bowman. Mm. And I think that's where a lot of people know me from, Carabas. Yeah, Carabas, yeah. And it was supposed to be only a two-week job, literally. It was only two weeks. The girl that did what I did then was going to Mexico, and they say, hey, how about you do it? And I'm like, two weeks? I'm like, ugh. <laughs> the owner got to meet him. He like, she's a hardworking girl. Like, let's, let's keep her doing something else here. And I stood around for a couple more months before school started. And then he said, hey, you think you want to be a hostess? I'm like, don't he see that he don't, I don't speak English? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like, all she has to do is smile and open the door, mm-hmm. which it was not true. You know, you have to answer the phone and talk mm-hmm. to people. But that was uh, a wonderful beginning for me because I got to meet so many people. Yeah. And even though I went to high school and went to drafting school, graduated with a draft, drafting degree, yeah. degree, I was still able to... Like, I have, the, I have the choice, like, the opportunity to choose. I'm like, you either go and try drafting and sit in an office. And I tried it, and my eyes rolled to the back yeah. three what is dra- times. Drafting just, just draw straight lines all day. Oh, it's like uh, architecture kind of stuff? Yeah, 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 well, you can go to different fields. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but a lot of those happen in an office mm. in front of a computer. And eight hours a day, just. Yeah, you're in danger to fall asleep on the keyboard and hurt uh-huh. yourself. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> so I decided to set Carabas, and the hours were flexible and I was able to still create artwork Mm. but it took many years for me to even think about doing it I recently met someone that said that until you meet someone that does what you do or what you want to do it's not really really real you mean doing it for a living for a living I mean you dream about it I mean I saw artists on TV magazines Mm. books I love art books but in 2011 I met an artist from Mexico City and he was the first human being that I was able to touch that he said, I'm an artist. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. And he's like pretty ballsy, right? Really, really <laughs> like. And he said, I'm an artist. And he was so proud of his work, very abstract. Uh, my parents never got it. They were just, what is this about? <laughs> they even made fun of it. But to me, it was the best best thing that could have happened to me because he told me you can do it. Right, right. So 2011 was Made probably the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just painting for myself. Mm-hmm. And right. that's what every artist says. Mm-hmm. I don't have to sell it. I don't have to show it. I'm just creating for myself because it makes me happy. But then, what are you going to do to live and survive that makes yeah. you as happy as that? So yeah. if you can combine those two things, there it is. Yeah. So that was, that was 2011? So that was 10 years ago. Yeah. So mm-hmm. in 10 years... You went from painting as a hobby. 
and working at a restaurant, and, and I enjoy shop. every minute of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now you're paying for a living, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's scary. Don't say it out loud. It's, I, I mean, it's just, it's just, uh, it's not that much time. Ten years mm-hmm. doesn't, you know, it doesn't seem like that much time. And considering I, that a lot of creative endeavors, some people go a really long time and never really get the opportunity to use it as your living. Musicians do that a lot. You know, mm-hmm. people have a band and they'll get to a certain point and then just never go past it. You know, yeah. um, and it's 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 quite an accomplishment. You know, to see your work everywhere around town, like you can't go and eat somewhere without seeing, you know, your work. Well, that that and and your where where what was the beginning of this this style that you have this uh, uh, hexagonal geometric, oh. not even geometric, but it's the the <laughs> I guess like this. It's like it's like tile. It's like a mosaic yeah. style that you have. Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, and and actually, me doing this for a living happened about maybe. Three years ago, yeah. that I, I 2014, mm. I was still working at Carabas. But remember that Mexican artist that I met? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. he was in my life for about four years. Okay, <laughs> and he was the best art school I could ever ask for. Mm-hmm. It was intense art classes from 24 uh, seven. All we wanted to do was museums, galleries, art books, and anything that we talk about was that. Well, it did took for, I'm getting way too personal here, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> is that it took for him to be gone mm-hmm. from, from the picture for me to say one morning. It really had to happen. So when you say that there are artists and musicians that are always in that middle, that mm-hmm. they just really don't jump to the, to the next mm-hmm. label, like I'm going to do it. For me, he had to be out of the picture because all my yeah. support was to him. I'm like, oh, he can do it. I mean, I was just all about helping him. Oh, this and, is a relationship thing. Yeah. 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 You know, you just want the best for them and you with them for the for the Almost role. like a like a crutch in a way. Yeah. Instead of you being able to just go off and do your own thing, you kind of just. Yes. Yeah. I didn't mind because I believe in his talent. Right. right and right. I still do. So the morning that he's gone, it really true. It really has to be morning or instant or second. When you say you're either going to do it or you're not going to do it. Mm. Well, I remember that morning. I woke up and and you will remember this moment when you do it. And I think you guys probably have those moments. Mm. and Or if not, you will because I promise you it's so real. I remember I told myself, you're not going to get out of the bed until you decide if you're going to do art. Like real, you're going to go for it or not. Yeah. You're going to either do it or not. All in. And that morning took me longer to get up of bed than, than usual. <laughs> <laughs> it really did. Yeah. But when I did, I said, the moment that you step out of the bed, you're going to walk as an artist. Hmm. You know what does that mean? Like you're literally yeah, going to. It's very intentional. You're yeah. talking to yourself and you're promising mm-hmm. yourself something. So I remember I step out of the bed and I touch the floor with my right, my, my right foot. And since that moment, I have not stopped walking as one. Mm. And I, I went in and I asked for one of my first shows, and which was offered to me a year before. Yeah. And I was trying to give it to him. I'm like, just take it, take it. He like, they didn't offer the show to me. They offered it to you. But I wasn't ready until that morning. <laughs> and, and I haven't stopped walking in that path. Mm. The technique or the, what people recognize my artwork, mm-hmm. I think has some influence with him. Mm-hmm. I got a really good introduction into abstracts. Mm-hmm. And appreciation for it. Because if you don't know anything about abstract painters, you won't appreciate it, right? Because mm-hmm. I see, I, I go see abstract paintings and I'm, our paintings are, are a sculpture and I'm just like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but if you knew the crazy yeah. mind behind it yeah. or the amazing cool story, then the appreciation was really thanks uh, to him. But then after that, I realized that people either love, love ab- abstract or hate abstract. Mm-hmm. There's no happy medium. You either mm-hmm. love it or don't. That simple. So I told myself, what if you can create something that is friendly enough for those that hate it, but abstract enough for those that want abstract? So I did that. And mm. and if you see my work from 2014, you will now recognize it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love to show you because it's really, really intense. And I love it as much as I love what I do now. Yeah. And I know I'm going to probably do it at some point again because <laughs> it's still part of me. But no, uh, I think Boma has inspired me. Yeah. 
and I love stained glass and I love uh, my culture, Mexico. And I think my work should speak a little bit of that. The mm-hmm. mosaic. It, it style. does. It seems um, even though you're doing these all these arts in Beaumont and all these works and murals and stuff, it seems like that culture has never left you. You know, when you're looking at one of the scenes you paint, it's always of, you know, uh, like a gradient sunset with a cactus, you know, or something <laughs> like that. So uh, how important is, is culture to your art? Mm-hmm. You know, is it like so important that it can never be separated or is it something that you just kind of think about and it guides you? No, I think, well, I think it's, it's part of me or who I am and I can be in China and I probably will still do cactus here and there, but people still identify with that yeah. mm-hmm. because cactus don't have, uh, they're not just in Mexico, they're everywhere, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just, I just happen to be from Mexico. <laughs> Somebody told me that and asked me, do you always want to be presented as a Mexican artist? I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm from Mexico. Yeah. yeah. But my artwork, I don't want it to be stuck with uh, Mexico. It definitely doesn't. It, I mean, it does maybe have have that vibe, but it doesn't ever come across as like it's a Mexican art, art piece. But I, what mm-hmm. I've discovered is that Bowman has influenced me, especially mm-hmm. after the pandemic, incredibly. Mm-hmm. Like I got to get a little introduction to bird watching. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. I always looked like one, but I wasn't huh? one. <laughs> yeah. This is like the hottest place in the world for bird watching. Yeah. So Yeah, so people yeah. from China and Europe were coming to see oh, our yeah. birds, mm-hmm. and we don't know we have them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I, I don't think... It's never going to stop evolving. Like it, where I go, I get all this goodness. Like I can feel, it can be even your space, you know, me being here. Mm-hmm. You know, you're always going to absorb and look around and yeah, then. You get inspiration from yes, everything. Yes, yeah. So I think the color, and somebody asked me, well, you do black and white? I'm like, one day. One day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know when, but I'm not ready for it yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love I remember the first time that I ever saw like a body of your work together was at a uh, craft beer festival. Like when you did the craft beer festival and I saw <laughs> all of your stuff around and I saw like the cohesive nature of it and all of these. And I just, I remember just loving the color yeah. more, more so than, color, yeah. more than really like the technique or the style. I just remember thinking about the intentionality of the color, you know, yes. and the colors you picked. And uh, I was just, I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I was like, man, I kind of, I think it's like a song. It's like, like a composition. Yeah. Like a composition. You put colors where it feels they're supposed to go. Mm-hmm. But I tell you, one of my favorite artists, I have this love and hate relationship, is Pablo Picasso. <laughs> right. Um, my goodness. I want to talk about the hate part. I want to talk about the love part. It doesn't matter what you look at his work. It can be a charcoal on a piece of paper, realistic, to a beautiful oil painting, to a literally wine pitcher made in clay. And you can recognize it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my goal is that is that even if I show you something from 2014 to now, or some of my uh, pieces that I made with clay, I, my goal is that you can still recognize them. And just like you said, yeah. you know, there was something like, like even you can see your personality through it. Yeah. You just know. You just know yeah. that it's like, oh, that's an S. Yeah. And I want to evolve. Mm-hmm. Uh, you never go. We're not going to be this human being. Like tomorrow we, we're changing just slightly and, and 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Mm-hmm. So I just hope that people can remember what my artwork looks right now because it might change in the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. But I still want to make sure you remember the past because it's no long, it's, it's always going to be part of the journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah, Picasso is a... Why do you, so why do you hate Picasso? <laughs> Let's, do you want to talk about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I see why you love him, but... Oh, I love his work so much. Yeah. Oh, well... Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> people, people are going to be like, oh, we're we didn't not, know. We're not going to get Picasso's people on here. Yeah, right? no. Yeah, yeah, nobody's yeah, coming Picasso's at Picasso's been gone, gone so no. he's, he's not going to find you. <laughs> They're going to be, oh, we didn't know this part of Ines. <laughs> no, uh, I just <laughs> do a lot of research okay. and... And when I'm interested in an artist, I go to the deepest. Mm-hmm. And I think his relationships were very strange. And, oh, yeah. He's a strange guy, you know. And um, Yeah. But I love that he woke up and went to sleep thinking about artwork. So that's the part that um, he almost did not care about anything else yeah. mm-hmm. or anybody else but his artwork. And yeah. I mean, it's like him and Salvador Dali. They're all like kind of <laughs> crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy yeah. weird, mean people sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know the craziest thing is that if you get 
as obsessive as, as I do with these artists, then you find that how they end and it's completely opposite of what they behave their whole entire life. So, um, yeah, Salvador Dali is another one that I really... Yeah. Picasso was interesting because it's like his work went backwards almost because I, I know that from when I know when he was a kid and taking art lessons he would get in trouble because his teacher would think he was just you know like getting a replica made because yes. he was so exact and precise yeah. uh. he could just draw anything and and he could just paint anything mm. and then you go from that which is what most people think is what painting is they place value on being able to like replicate something identically you know and they don't think abstract so it's just strange that he went from being a precise realist to being an absurdist Absolutely. inventing like cubism and things it's just such a such a strange well i mean i guess whenever you, whenever you have like the realism down whenever you're a, a kid then guess, it's like yeah. you, you're gonna get bored pretty you gotta quick. break it i guess <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah let's see if i can break yeah. this yeah no you just touched the part that i love the most about Pablo Picasso. That is absolutely my favorite yeah. part. Like, I tell everybody, that's exactly what I want to... I teach art, uh, some private lessons, and that's the first thing I touch in their class is his story. Mm. How when he was nine, he can paint like a master, and as he got older, he started painting more and more and more as a child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> that to me is beautiful because he was... Not interested on, oh, he actually said whenever the camera was invented or the photographs, he's like, why would I want to paint something that a camera can do? That's mm -hmm. very know? true. Yeah. So when he said that and he started stepping on different uh, periods and he just, like growing, he was growing as an artist. And mm -hmm. that's the best example because growing doesn't mean. Doesn't mean getting more realistic. More refined. Yeah. Yeah. More Better. Growing Better. means. Better. Yeah loving and knowing yourself more and more that you're so secure that you can do a stick. I, I love an example of his. It's a bull. And he has this beautiful oil pastel or oils and then pastels and charcoal. And as you can see that little movie kind of passing by, mm -hmm. the bull become only like little lines. <laughs> it's like a stick figure of a bull. Mm -hmm. And that's a Picasso. Yeah. And I love it because that's how we know him as the most. So as a child painter. Mm. And it's crazy to think that he uh, he lived and died like without finding a claim, you know. Really. <laughs> yes. What do you mean finding finding a claim? finding a claim? Like he it took it took. Oh, him, he wasn't famous. Yeah, he until wasn't famous he, after. He yeah, was dead. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a crazy thing to think about. It goes all the way back to thinking about people hitting a level and then never really going beyond it. You know. It's funny to think that you're more successful than Pablo Picasso. No, was. no, no, no. Pablo Picasso you know? reached a lot of success. Um, <laughs> he'd made a lot of money. I don't think. No. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> he was something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but he he was in this strange. Uh, that was a strange period where it wasn't art wasn't as celebrated as it was in the Renaissance. You know, whenever right. people were patronizing the arts, weren't, weren't rich artists, people rich people were getting together artists, and like throwing like, their money at artists. Well, artists yeah. back then were almost like jesters in a way, right? Like you you were you had patrons and it's almost like, you know, like, you know, the 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 classical composers Beethoven and all that and basically yeah. you would be you would live with a rich guy. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, they would yeah. take care of yeah. you. I don't know if Picasso is the same way cuz I mean Picasso was around and he died in the 50s and 60s. No, later. I'm thinking yeah. of I'm thinking of who uh, got cut his ear off. Van Gogh. Oh, you think of Van Gogh? That's yeah. that's a one. That's a yeah. guy. That poor thing. Yeah. He never got. I don't think no. he only sold one piece for very oh, little. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. No, Pablo was uh, really successful. Oh really, yeah, I was thinking of Van Gogh. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah really young that's age. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. And he was pretty smart on business. Mm -hmm. He knew, and he met the right people. Yeah. Married the right people. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love, I mean, he was, he married the right person and then he was having tea and hanging out with Coco Chanel and all these amazing oh, wow. people. Yeah. So he, w he was pretty smart on business. Mm -hmm. and it's like a Warhol type. Strategic, yeah. mm -hmm. very strategic. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Oh no, poor Van Gogh. Uh, but who is one of the most famous right now is Vincent Van Gogh. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's about being. Have you, have you seen the, um, have you seen that there's, there seems to be like a new thing that's taken off in a lot of places where mm -hmm. it's sort of like art tourism in a way where people will set up these exhibits but it's not a piece on the wall it's where you step into a room and the yes. entire room is a piece oh they got that, that van they, gogh they have houston, a van gogh yeah. in houston right now you could go and see it yeah. and it's you'll step into a room and like the entire room is like starry night you know music you, yeah. it's involved yeah. with it yeah. no i'm going the six 
September oh, you went to the Van Gogh one? Yeah, so tickets sold so quick. Are they out? And the last thing I heard was Frida Kahlo is coming. Okay, that's the, ne- that's the next that's one. That's going to be the next one. It's, it's cool. I mean, it's some of it feels a little disingenuous, you know, like uh, like the color room. You know, it feels like... But the idea behind it is really cool. I, I like I like it. I like these. Well, new, it's like any any way of like like um, it's just different. It's, well, it's like you, immersing yourself. Well, you you everybody has their face yeah. on you know iPads. You can look up any major artwork that's ever been made. Yeah. Uh, not very many people get to see it in person, and I think see it in person is, and this might be woo woo of me, but you know you can look at Starry Night on your phone all the time. As soon as you see it first in person, you're Five feet yeah. away from it, if you can get in front of it that clo- that close, uh, there's a you feel you get something from it. Oh, I you tell know? you what it is: is the human touch. Yeah. Mm. If you see the starry night, is so small, mm-hmm. texture is thick, and and it's just like a cake. Mm-hmm. So when you see art in person, it's like seeing the human. Mm-hmm. You can see the strokes, and you can see sometimes hair. You can see sometimes. Um, the prints, you can see the hand mark, you can see. So to me, it's like seeing the human mm-hmm. without. Like the imperfections, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, the imperfection. And you get really close and, and that's different. But I think what they're doing with this new visual and audio is being more appealing to the young generation. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, yeah that's kind of what and I was getting at. Is that to me is yeah. worth. I mean, if if I'm interested and, and I, you know, it's... And I'm really about traditional, you know, going to a gallery, experiencing one-on-one. Uh, it will be so wrong of me to say this is bad if I yeah. if right. I don't experience it first. Yeah. So I come back and let you know how to go. Yeah, yeah that's cool. I've no, I mean I th- I think it's it's a perfect way of getting a younger generation yeah. uh, interested in art and artists and, and all those things because you know without people to look at the art it's not you know what are you gonna I mean you make the art for you then you just yeah. keep making it for you I guess mm-hmm. it'll always get made hopefully. I've sh- well, hopefully hopefully until <laughs> until the robots take over. Yeah, that's right. until <laughs> okay. yeah. They're, Until they're, the robots, already, they're already making art. Until the robots start making art that's good, man. We're, ooh. It's not I, good, though. It's it's actually really unsettling and terrifying. Cause, it is to me. Yeah. I saw yeah. the video of them dancing yeah. together. That freaks me it, the hell yeah, out. Freaks that me out. freaks me out. And I was like, and my friend was showing me the video. He's like, they have more rhythm than I do. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, man. They're taking over. Well, yeah, it's because they have perfect rhythm. because they're ones and zeros. Yeah, they okay. have perfect rhythm. You yes. Know? There's no imperfection in the rhythm. It's just right on beat. Yeah. Oh man, well, let's not let's not. No, no, go there because yeah, we all got go really there. petrified, like we yeah. really scared no, about I it. I mean, it's free, it freaks me out. I mean, and and anybody that looks at that and says that it's okay, it's like no, wait until they're chasing you. No, it's, <laughs> well, it's not even that. It's just if if you know if 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 people if systems can replicate the things that we've always thought are inherently human, like art, music, composership, then it's like there's not even creative a point. arts. Yeah, yeah, just anything creative. Yeah. If because that's all we got left. That's what we yeah. thought we had yes. left. Yeah, so. I don't know. What yeah. what else can computers not do? I mean, if they can write books and they're already starting to write books. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think. Oh, well, maybe I, maybe I have. Um, and, and this is a, a, a maybe a deeper conversation too about where everything comes. Everything has been done, like they say. That's yeah. why they're capable to do that. But what about your story? Mm. They cannot write your story. Mm. So that's why I tell anybody: if you don't paint your pain. Nobody's going to paint. Now, if you don't paint your painting or, or that idea or that concept that you have, like, playing in your head, if you don't paint it, nobody is ever, ever going to do that. Unless you, like, become really famous or something like that. Then somebody will write a biography about you. But. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but I think a, a, a robot cannot write your story because yeah. you will yeah. have to tell it to the robot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think we still have our— You think we're still the masters of our destiny. What if they wrote your biography yes. based on your browsing history? Oh, that, no, let's not do this. Let's not go there. <laughs> let's not go there. Yeah. <laughs> no, yes, that would be a different. Yeah. 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 No, I think we still have the power of authenticity and uniqueness, and nobody can speak the way you speak. Nobody can move yeah. the way you move. Nobody, I mean, yes, we can go back to, yeah, they, they can, you know, if they want to. But let, you know, we're not there yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the scary part is that we watch movies where things are like, scary but we're not quite there yet so I think this is the time for us to to take advantage that we can steal yeah mm-hmm. I think so too yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not yeah. get it while it's good yeah because yeah. I don't know if the next generation is going to have that chance yeah we'll see 
I mean, but, sad to say, maybe not the next one, maybe the generation after. But you know what? We might just, we might, you know, just so let's, uh, let's paint the while caldera we can. and yeah. Yellowstone might blow up or yeah, yeah, write your book an before they write your yeah, write your book, <laughs> yeah, paint yeah. your paint. You get you're a lo- you an author yet? Huh? Yeah, yeah, go write your book. Yeah, you know, write your music. <laughs> you know, do whatever. Design your video games before before while you got a chance. Yes. Yeah, we all got to wake like up. That's like an oddly like, it's it's inspiring, but it's also kind of sad. <laughs> Yeah. So you better do it now. Cause, well, I mean, it's hey, also man. the same thing. Nobody We're still lives alive, forever. though. So nobody lives forever. We gotta, we gotta go out there and get this creative bread. <laughs> <laughs> You're touching you. You're like, oh. mm, take a break. Yeah, take Let's a little break. <laughs> Hi, this is Jake Hooker of Jake A Hooker, and you are listening to A to Z podcast. A to Z podcast is funded in part by our patrons on Patreon. If you would like to support us, head over to patreon.com slash A to Z BMT. All right, it's break time. We're going to tell you all the cool things going on in Southeast Texas. And uh, this upcoming Saturday, uh, not this one coming up, but in a couple of weeks, September 4th, uh, at 7 p.m. Central Time, the Art Studio Inc. They're going to have Reemergence, the Tenant Show 2021. Uh, basically, it's a show of all the tenants that have booths and have uh, workspaces. These at are the, the best studio. artists in Southeast Texas, folks. I would say so. There's some of them. Uh, it's going to be a cool show. They're going to have beer as usual. Uh, I think there's going to be a band going to be playing in the uh, in the uh, little patio area. Uh, it's going to be a cool event. Uh, Reemergence, I'm assuming, is is a um, a reference to the fact that they probably didn't get a tenant show last probably year not, yeah. due to COVID, or they had to do it virtually. Uh, this will be in person, as far as we know right now. Uh, come on down. It's a free event. Uh, it's always a good time at the the art studio. Eight. That's right. Support yeah. the local arts. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. You know, support them. That's it. Or they'll die. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, if you want to advertise with us, your boys, get at us. Uh, you can send us an email to feedback at a to z podcast dot com. We will work with you. We will uh, try to boost your brand, maybe an event, anything you guys have at all. Just email us, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll be happy to work with you. That's it. And let's and, get back to this episode. Yeah, with Nez. Oh, maybe we can talk about the art space that we, we need to. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Spread the. Yeah, bring it up, and we'll. we'll yeah, anything on. you got community-wise, yeah, absolutely. Are you are you on the DBCAD board? Okay, yeah, that's good. I mean, like, have you been sharing Wait. anything else? I'm like, no, I haven't. Yeah. But I'm. Just are you in like a group text? And they're like, hey, please share this. <laughs> the DBCAD, yeah, that's that's what all of mine. Are. Yeah, that's a that's a mystery to me, dude. I know that you know more about it than DB-CAD? I do. DBCAD, yeah, DBCAD. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. It's it's so mysterious. I I wish they I wish they would reach out to me. Oh. uh Make sure I uh, will make sure. Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. Well, I'm actually saying it publicly right now. But oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If they want, but I wish they'd reach out to me because I'd like to help any way I can. Um, Absolutely. But it, it's the, the the people that are in there are awesome. Uh, Just all and as um, uh, Begita's in in that group, uh, they have an excellent team of people and they're doing a lot of things and probably a lot of things that I don't even know about. I don't even, there's a lot of things that, that Jess will announce and I'll be like, Oh, I didn't even know they were working on that. Um, but it's a great yeah. group and they're, they're doing, they're doing everything right. So one of the last things we did, what that was pretty amazing. And, and, and I hope that next year just gets better is make music day. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. That this was really is cool. uh, international. Mm-hmm. And we, I mean, it was music at the it Edison Plaza, Tacos La Bamba. Very good. Yeah. We went downtown and, and it's just going to get better. So mm-hmm. this year was good. It's just going to get better. And mm-hmm. hopefully they reach up to you and, and promote more. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll probably do another thing at the Jefferson again. Uh, hopefully yes. hopefully we'll be able to do it outside and it won't be raining. All yes, the time. yes, yeah. exactly. But the next thing, the big thing is the art spaces for Bowman, Texas. Uh, we go. We have to go through stages. Mm-hmm. And the one that we're working on right now is the surveys. Mm-hmm. We need to reach a, a point. We need everyone to... If you know an artist or you're an artist, you're creative, um, we want to know a couple of things about you. Um, everything is confidential. Mm-hmm. And we have until August 8th. Yeah. I will give you all the info. We'll put that uh, link. We're going to put that link in the in the details of this show. So basically click on that link. It's a short survey. I mean, it'll take you 
maybe five minutes. It basically asks, you know, um, it does ask some income stuff and everything like that. Like, what what do you, what do you, what do you, what are you working with money wise? What would you be able to afford? And what would you want to do in that space? Right. So, yeah. What yeah. is the art space? Where art space is is a place. Uh, they ba- it's a nonprofit that basically they they focus on downtown. In historic buildings and revitalizing downtown areas in in places like Galveston, Houston, yeah, but is, San it, is it murals or like I don't, no, no, I don't they, understand they, they what buy, it is. They basically find a building. Okay. They buy the building. They renovate it. And what's generally with the ones that I've seen is they have artist lofts. Oh, live, okay. Live oh, workspaces. I got you. I understand. Uh, yeah. Up top, and then below they sell out. Uh, they yeah. sell shops. So I understand. So the one yeah. in Galveston, in downtown Galveston, uh, it has a bar. It has like a like a coffee shop, a bakery. Uh, on the lower floors, and then you can see the artist lofts above, and, and you can see people in them with their lights and, and, and doing things. So it's gotcha. uh, yeah. The option is that if you don't want to live there, it's okay. You can just get a space to create. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a mixed live workspace. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And the idea is that if you cook, if you write, if you yeah. literally, if you have a, you you probably can have a space there. Like yeah. that's a kind of deal. We can podcast in my home again. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, that that is uh, something that we're working on uh, as we speak. And um, another thing that we're doing is white linen. This is probably the first big event the community players is putting out. It's mm. going to be August the seventh. Uh, I'll also give you the details. But it's going to be a mix of music, drinks, artists, and it's going to be outdoors. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're looking forward to that one. Mm. White linen. White linen. Night. White linen. So it's going to mm-hmm. be like a. It's going to be like an exhibit, but with also a lot of other... Yeah, well, we want to have art and music, and yeah. we just want to make it where you dress up and you feel oh, like okay. you're you. going yeah. to an event. And it's a soiree. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So I'll be there with a lot of other talented friends uh, from the area. And um, I'm doing a show in Waco in oh, wow. September. Oh, wow. Cool. That's so awesome. Really Wait, excited. you doing an art show? What, uh, what gallery? This is going to be a Mayborn Museum. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. I met the director a year ago. I got to participate a little bit on the Cinco de Mayo uh, celebration with a friend of mine, Eric Linares. And the director contacted me, like, Ines, why would you like to participate this year again? I'm like, love to help. Like, no, no, bring all you, bring your artwork. We have this whole room for you to show. Uh-huh. Oh, that's awesome. And I can show everything and anything that I want. So remember the pieces that I mentioned to you, like 2014, mm-hmm. that you won't even recognize or you won't think they're mine? Mm-hmm. I'm bringing them. Oh, oh wow, yeah. good. Yeah, I'm bringing things that are like... You're going to see the whole timeline. Uh, yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of, yeah. Uh, and I want to bring some guitars. So what I did with a lot of guitars is that I would clean my old, like the leftover paint in the brush mm-hmm. instead of putting it in the water and clean letting it go. Yeah. I clean them with guitars. So those <laughs> guitars are like super beautiful to me because it's just... We need to give you a guitar. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, got some, I got some laying around. <laughs> yeah, you want a no, guitar? If you'd, absolutely, I would love to. Okay. And and it's just leftover paint, uh-huh. but the colors is still the colors that I love. So uh-huh. you you'll be able to still recognize the guitar, just like you mentioned before. Yeah. Uh, Here's I, a weird question: What's your favorite color? <sighs> you see, I I refuse to say which one was because I'm like, no, I don't have one. I love them all. They're all the same. Blah blah blah. But my bottle of water is this color. <laughs> okay. My bicycle is this color. Like a, was it like sea foam? It's almost like turquoise. And I like yeah, to yeah. say that it's a mixture of blue and green. Uh-huh. And um, uh, somebody say that. Like a robin's egg. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody said that uh, the creation colors or God's favorite color was blue and green. Mm. Uh, because a lot of things are blue and green. And mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? Maybe that's why I like turquoise because it's the collection of those two. Maybe so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's a good color. But I'm excited. So I, I'm i going to the point where I even ask, can I bring anything I want? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, anything you want. I'm like, you know what? I I hate to throw my paintbrushes away. So now I have hundreds of them. Wow. So I want to do maybe a little installation when I bring all these old paintbrushes so people can see how you go through That's really incredible. so many. And a lot of those you forget and leave out and mm-hmm. they dry and you're like, no. Yeah. You know, I could have yeah, used you it for a little longer. Yeah. So it's a like little redemption for them. They they get to have <laughs> get a little, have little you know, little spot I with like a little that. clear. That's fire. Yeah. Do you like to personify things a lot? You know, like give give everything like a little uh, personality, little, or like you know, like or at, at least it's due. Yeah. yeah. Everything, even the yeah. the dry paint. Mm-hmm. I started in 2014. I remember I have a little palette and I peel some color and I was like. 
the bottom is completely like a surprise. I'm like, you know, so. <laughs> it's very, it's like smooth and. Yeah. Well, you have different colors yeah. that you mix on top. They dry. But whenever you peel, it's something that you have no clue what you're going to find. So <laughs> since 2014, I started saving them. And I created these pieces that I call until the end. Uh-huh. As Delphine. And I'm like, I'm not throwing you away. I'm going to use you until the end. Yeah. So this is this will be trash to other people. Or like we all have. I'm like, I tell all the artists, like, you do something with your leftovers. You know, it's yeah. not it's not leftovers. It's not. So I've been using that and I'm gonna bring some of those okay. to Waco as well. So I'm just gonna bring from I'd love to see a picture of all the paintbrushes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I do too. I want to see all the paintbrushes. There's, some, there's, some, I, I, there's something that I, I realized uh, from Kevin Clay's uh, showing with the with the hot dogs <laughs> that that I love, love I love. It's like if you do like a series of something, right? You mm-hmm. do a series of like let's say a series of five paintings, ten paintings, something like that. But there's something I love about a ridiculous amount of the same thing, you okay. know? Yeah. So like 160 hot dogs or a hundred some odd paintbrushes and and then like put them all together it's like there's something about almost like the weight of the work that the artist did is in it I think it's more like a statement uh well it's it's, that's all that that represents hundreds of hours yes you know and it's like that's even if it's just a bin full of paintbrushes that still represents like hundreds of hours of work. It's something even you if don't, it wasn't yeah. that was the it wasn't it's, the intention. It's, it's a part that you don't get to see when you just look at one painting. Uh-huh. You don't get to see yes. that part. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's like the behind the scenes. Yeah, and and and, yeah. and even with the hot dog thing, it's like you're seeing hundreds of hours of work on the wall, you know. But it's represented in all the little pieces, all the little paintbrushes. Yes. And it's like it's something about that that whole idea is just I, I oh, love, I love it. Oh, I love it. Yes, I, love I went it. to his studio before he did the show. And I remember looking around and there was hot dogs <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> but then I went to the exhibit and I told him how proud I was. It yeah. looked so great. Yeah. And it was so, like, art is supposed to make you feel mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I tell people, I don't care if it's ang- like anger or it's like happiness or you're like confused. I don't care what it is as long as you feel something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like I said, it doesn't matter where it is, but you want to feel. And when you walk in the room and you see the hot dogs, you're like, oh, you know, it's <laughs> so joy. good, so Pure good. Joy. Oh, I, I told him. We gotta get, we gotta get Kevin on. Yeah, yeah. We, oh, hit him he's back. one of the most interesting people to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> Promise you. That's that's funny. It made me. It makes me think of something. Like so, in 2014, that's when you said that you put your right foot on the ground and you decided you were going to be an artist from then on, right? Yeah. And so now, and you're an artist. The art community here has evolved and become something different. So, so huge right now. So who was like, who was some of your favorite artists in the community when you started? And then who are some of your favorite artists in the community now? Oh, you see, I I fell in love with 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 meeting people. Mm-hmm. Like anybody I met, I was just they were the coolest people I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I was like, oh, if I can one day like talk to them, you know, it was just like, oh, they're so cool. And what happened through the years is that the people that I admire and I feel that I can even say hello because I was like, oh, they'll never say hello to me. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Like you're like watching from far and they look so cool that you're like, oh. well, what happened through the years is that they become very close friends mm-hmm. and I got to see them in a more personal level. Uh, you came and sat at the table. Yeah. 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 Oh, I have a couple experiences that I was like, am I really here? Yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, Daryl Tropy, I always admired him from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And he gave me an opportunity to to be part of one of his big shows. Okay. Uh, it was very grand, very, very amazing. And I put a lot of hours into, into that show. And now we are people that we just hang out mm. every now and then. He's like, hey, I have a new toy. I'm like, oh. Oh, if I tell you the last story we did, it was pretty cool. We're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I never had a, yeah. Uh, I'm not a big fan of guns, but, and it was a toy. It was not a real yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, so there's many people I admire. When I f- went to the Victoria House the first time, and I sat on one of those, back then, it was uh, a gallery and a little mm-hmm. stage with music. Mm-hmm. So if you walked there, it felt like, you know, Andy's Warhol studio. Yeah. Like everybody's a celebrity and mm-hmm. everybody was, that's, that's, that's how I started seeing Bowman and years have passed and I just have learned more about him and I see how more are becoming 
yeah. and growing mm -hmm. and developing. So no, admiration steals entirely to to the big group. Mm -hmm. Keith Carter. I mean, I just admire him for for the longest. And one day we we just became friends and started walking together and talking about life, sharing our books and uh, yeah. So the people that I admire the most and mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that I can text and be like, hey, <laughs> guess what? I just did an interview, you know, or yeah, things like that. Yeah. So yeah. and there's I. You know, it's the art community is always going to keep growing and evolving. And, you know, people like Keith Carter has been around forever, but there's also people that are just now starting out. Mm. The same way you, you know, admire these people, there's people coming up now that they admire you that way, yeah. you know. And that's, yeah. um, do you feel like a responsibility for that, you know? You see my chicken skin? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> there's some people yeah. that have approached me and, and I never seen and they say, Ines, you know, I'm like, oh. I'm like, oh. And, yeah. and they tell me how much they love what I'm doing and, and what was happening. And and it's weird. It's like, weird. It's, yeah. <laughs> in a good way. It's weird in a good way because you're hoping you create an impact in a way. Like you're making what you're making because you want to create an emotion. Mm -hmm. The scary part is that you don't know how or who are you reaching to. Mm. So I have a few moms or teenagers that have like I want to meet her I want to and I have to take a whole day off to take these kids to the museum mm. the art studio the mural sites and I take him to Reyes for a cup of coffee and then That's I really nice. ask yeah. him write, write notes and I, if I'm meeting with a teenager or young student that is like interested in art I don't need with way too many I tell them first of all I'm not gonna nobody can do the work for you mm. I can only give you advice and a couple like notes like you have to keep in mind if you want to do this. This is what you need to know. Mm. It's not. It's not a easy, easy ride. Yeah. I always ask him to bring a notebook and a pencil mm -hmm. or a pen because I want him to take notes. But I take it as a serious. Um, it's a responsibility. Yeah. If you have, if you can impact some people, make sure you do it with real intentions. And, and that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's very supportive. Yeah, man, it's, it's, that's something. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that. What, what, like support people? So, yeah, we don't. We're, yeah. No, mentoring. Yeah. I, yeah, I mentoring. love this so quote. First, first off yeah. is thirsty, so we're going to get you a shot. <laughs> yeah. uh, wait, they're not, not teenagers, though. Just <laughs> no, 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 not teenagers. Young Bucks, we're doing, we're doing podcaster training. Uh, first thing you do is drink a lot of water. Um, oh, trust yeah. me, I have to learn my <laughs> lesson myself. <laughs> and have too many opinions. <laughs> That's it. Too yeah. many opinions. No, no. Uh, one of the first or most amazing experiences that I have had through this period, in 2016, I met, I had a friend, and she had a beautiful family. But one of his daughter, one of her daughters, Jennifer Aguilar, um, seemed to be really interested in art. And one day, as I'm doing a little graffiti, like mm -hmm. the building was my friend's, and my friend gave me spray paint. I went to practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is a crazy story because I, have, I don't think I have shared it with anybody yet. But it's a car that is driving by the road, and I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble. And they, they yeah. stop. And I was about to turn around and say, like, my friends owe the building. I have permission. Uh -huh. But it's my friend's husband and Jennifer. Okay, yeah. And I remember Jennifer is looking through the window with big eyes, and she's just like, she's like into it. And when I saw her face, I saw the way I feel when I'm doing something like that or <laughs> yeah. in her. Mm -hmm. So I asked the dad, I said, if it's okay with you, she can stay in pain for a little bit. And her mom's studio was only like two, three blocks away from there. I said, when we don't, I just drop her off. Mm. I didn't know she was 13 because she always acted like she was 16 or 17. Right. And every time she told me, oh, I'm 13, I'm like, what the, are you still 13? Are you still 14? You're like, you've been 13 for four years, yeah. girl. Yeah, and she acts, she always acted like she was 18. Yeah. Mm. Well, finally this year, she turned 18. <laughs> and she's been helping me since since then. She's been helping since, since 2016. Mm -hmm. And she has learned how to mix every single color that I need. Oh, wow. Like, so she's like an assistant. She's, she's, she's my yeah. daughter, best friend. Right hand, left hand, and sister. Mm. She's yeah. all of those things. I have, if I put a magazine, I say I need, or a little sample color, I say I need this color in like three different tones. And she's like, okay. 
and she does that. <laughs> but she was so good, like, learning. So a lot of people wanted to do that. I'm like, oh, we want to do what she's doing. It takes so much effort it and takes a lot of time. you wanted to yeah. do it. Dedication. You, they got to show up. Dedication. It's hard to get people to show up. We will yeah. work from sunrise to sunsets. We have to put little timers. Mm. We have to learn to do food, drinks, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. restaurants. <laughs> you have to make yourself eat. Otherwise, we yeah. will just not do it. Uh-huh. You get you get so laser focused, don't you? Yeah. yeah you just oh, I, you forget I, to drink and uh, eat. And, so that's, yeah. why, that's why I carry that little bottle. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. Like, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, okay, drink yeah. water. But this girl set her mind to go to a wonderful school of art when she was younger. And uh, but I, uh, last year, she said, I'm going to apply and I, I hope I can get in it. So she did. She got into the Art Institute of Chicago. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. Yeah. And I'm so proud of her. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do without her. Like, I'm ready like, yeah. you know, her parents are heartbroken because I'm like, you don't know that. I'm more than. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anytime we have a meeting and the parents and we talk about her leaving, I'm like, I get more emotional. Aww. But it's because we, we came to the point where we go to install a painting to a home and I'm ready to install it and I'm looking around and she knows exactly what I need. And she's like, Missy Ness, oh, yeah. All these years working together, she still call me yeah. Missy Ness. <laughs> yeah, she's your protege. You I know? love, yeah. yeah. Well, she's like, I'm like, thank you. And I'm like, I didn't know I needed that, but she <laughs> yeah. did. So I'm really proud to, she, like I said, we don't know what we're going to do or who are we going to impact. Mm. I've been trying to help a lot of uh, young students and help them put pieces on our shows. Uh, but she is so such a clear example that if you work with somebody enough hours, uh, you can make something that, I mean, I, I'm so proud of her that I cannot even. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but you're going to have to find another one now. <laughs> there's not another one. <laughs> no, I'm not saying there's there's right. never going to be Nicole, another yes. Jennifer, but, yeah. you know, now you got to find another protege. No, absolutely. And it, have another person go to an art school, you mm-hmm. know? Oh, that would be so Yeah, incredible. you know, you could do that again. Yeah. Well, next week, her and I are going to Chicago oh, to good. do a little trip. And uh, I get she gets to visit her school before she goes there, and uh, I get to go and see a Frida Kahlo show. Okay, yeah. Twenty six paintings of her. Oh wow! Okay. So I'm really really excited. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Nice little end note to the uh, to y'all's you know working relationship. Yeah. yeah so and she'll be back. You'll see her again. Yeah. Hopefully, I mean, in yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, plane tickets to Chicago are like real cheap. Bucks. Super cheap. Hundred bucks yeah. out of Houston. No problem. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I'm excited for her to be there. Uh, I know I have somebody to visit, but um, she's the first one. Like, I think me speaking to you right now about what I'm doing and who is impacted or who's not or who are you touching or not is one thing. But if we really go back to the beginning, like what took for, for me to even stand here in front of a microphone and mm-hmm. actually speak to you, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, my God. I even put her in my little speech. If you would have told that girl in high school that she was going to be speaking to people today, I promise you that she would have tried way harder <laughs> from the beginning. But I did. I was a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. So for me to see the all the little things that have happened in my life, to be here speaking to you about even a, a, my, 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 my friend Jennifer, mm. I also know what her family have to go through and what she's gone through to to be where she is right now. So um, thank you for the opportunity because I didn't know I was even going to go to that point to <laughs> talk about like me being like. You made it. You, <laughs> made, you made it here. Started, yeah. started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah, absolutely. Started at Carabas, now you're here. You're good. Yeah. Oh, and well. You, and you know why I thought about her? Ooh. Because you mentioned Thirsties. Oh, oh, yeah. Just between you and I, I keep telling Jennifer, I'm like, Jennifer, I cannot wait for you to be 21. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so she can go to Thirsties? So her yeah. adventure so she, will be yeah. slightly different. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, she's 18, so a couple more years, yeah. we'll be able to just... Just you have know. some cocktails in Chicago. Yeah, you know? That will be yeah. yes, yeah. yes. We'll be talking about when she was a little thirteen-year-old. Yeah, uh, that's well, sweet. That's real sweet. Well, yeah. That's good. And uh, you know, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks yeah. for thanks for just uh, doing what you do in the community. Yeah, you thanks know? for making and thanks I know for making you... Beaumont look a lot less ugly. You yeah. know, it's uh, no, it's a team effort. You know, it, it is. It really is a team effort. Like, uh, I'm really happy that it's going on. Like, uh, 
Presley's murals, you know, uh-huh. like stuff. It's your just, murals? Man, I mean, it's, I, I heard, heard your tra- the traffic box you did is, yeah. is right by my house, and I see it every day. So I saw the owners of the house today yeah. and <laughs> at uh, breakfast, and they went to my table and hugged me, and they told me, you know, wasn't that wasn't that like you didn't even want to do do one, and then no. they were like, we want you to do ours. <laughs> no, a friend of mine. I'm not gonna put his name up there, <laughs> Nathaniel. Uh, <laughs> he said, look, my friends live. Very close from there. His birthday is coming up. I would love for you to do this painting, this box. And I'm like, no, no, you know, I don't enough. It's so hot. It's, it's hot, the middle of yeah. August, mm-hmm. I think. And I don't think I can do it. Like, don't worry. I prime it. I clean it for you. We get it done so quick. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Then a magazine called me. And I, hey, are you going to do another box? I'm like, yeah, I'm actually going to do a new one. Okay. Mm. A couple months go by and they call me one morning. Like, hey. Are you read? Are you working on the box? Because we want to do a little article this week, mm-hmm. maybe Thursday. They call me Monday, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah." <laughs> Hang out the phone, call my friend Nathaniel. <laughs> Can I be there tomorrow? Hey, go prime this box. <laughs> and I say, "Hey Nathaniel, you know the box is happening. They they want me to start because you know." He's like, "Oh yeah, I'm in Austin." I'm like, "Okay, well." We well, could. So you had, to, good. you had to do it all. <laughs> you had to prime yes, it. I have two amazing. Uh, Friends of mine, um, Olivia Cobb, she's mm-hmm. doing beautiful artwork herself mm-hmm. right That's now. Monica's daughter? Yes, yeah, she's yeah. amazing. Rainy was another amazing artist. They both helped me. We primed clean. Like, it was messy. Yeah. Like, this box was graffiti and uh-huh. texturized, and like the cleaning part was to the next level. Yeah. I even forgot about that. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but no, I, that box ended up being a really good thing happening. Because people started being more aware of mm-hmm. of the artwork. Yeah, they did. Yeah, and they started recognizing maybe the style. The first one I did, I did downtown because mm-hmm. I really wanted to be by the police department. Yeah, that's a high traffic area, right? Over, yeah, yeah, but it was. Um, but the other box, I think it connected both. Mm-hmm. I think it, it was able to balance mm-hmm. uh, the city, and they were starting to. It really made something. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. All your artists, you know, even 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 the. Even your piece at Crazy Cajun, you know, like that's not a public piece that's in a restaurant. Our, but it was, it was uh, awesome. What was that place downtown, Jeff? Uh, the the Fishers. Um, Did you saw the Blue Heron? The, the Heron and yeah. the, oh yeah, uh, the Heron. Yeah, at yeah the Current. Yeah, I love that one. I saw yeah. some Jennifer and I had the most fun on that one because we have the whole entire building for ourselves uh-huh. at night. Mm-hmm. Uh, during the day, we had a Starbucks next door. Yeah, the place is not open yet, so we have a radio. We have tea. Um, it was pretty good. I mean, yeah, we yeah. were having a party. Yeah. I tell you, the one that I really loved doing with her was the cattail march tables. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those tables are longer than this table, and they don't seem as big as they are. They're huge. <laughs> but her and I will show up before sunrise, put a little blanket on top of the building on top, get a little teacup, mm-hmm. two cups of tea, and I told her, we're not going to start until we see the sunrise come up. Oh. So we'll have our cup of tea, see the sunrise, and then got it over system and work until sunset. Yeah. So. And remember to eat. And remember to we eat. did, yeah. We set did. timers. Yeah. We did well, a lot of eating. Well, you got any, uh, any final words for, for the, the listeners and watchers? Anything? Keep doing what makes you happy. Uh, if I can remind that myself every day, and I say it because I need to remind myself that, but if we do more of the things that make us happy, uh, everyone is happy around us. Yeah. Um, sounds simple. It's not. There's a lot of creatives that talk about the the difficult part about being a creative, and that is a big part of. But um, at the end, or when you finally get that out of your system, it's worth every difficulty or every struggle. It's worth it. Mm. So. I'm going back to Kevin. I don't know how hard it was to make those hot dogs, but I promise you how satisfied should like it is for us to see it. Can you imagine as the artist to oh, see yeah. it out? So yeah, just just keep more keep doing more of what makes you happy and smile. All right. Well, it's a very positive note to end. Mm-hmm. And uh thank you, thank you for coming on. Mm-hmm. You know. Thanks for doing what you do and just keep doing it, you know. That's thank it. you. Oh, you'll keep doing this because yeah. that's what Yeah. Okay, well can I give you some one more thing? Yeah. yeah. And this is like me being a doctor, sure. shrink kind of deal, <laughs> is that everything that I share with you, 
I care with me always. Mm -hmm. But thanks to you and reaching out and putting this table and the sound and paying the electricity mm. and paying, it's allowing this to go farther. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't for you too, there will be no, like it, it stops there. Mm. But because of you, I'm able to share just what I'll share every day, yeah. all day long, you know, to my neighbor and the, you know, the stranger at the grocery store because I do it all the time. <laughs> but you are, you are like, I do that. Yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah. Like, and that's what they know. Well, that's why people know me because I'm not afraid to share yeah. what I'm here to share. Mm -hmm. But you opening a bigger door mm -hmm. for that message to go. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal. So thank you. I hope you yeah. like By got a means. little. <laughs> well, you know. Now more than the people at the grocery store is going to know your story. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> two more guys. Two more. Two more. Yeah. At least. At least two. Me, a few at least people. Two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll see y'all. We'll see y'all on the next one. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. Oh, boy. Thank you. No one, no one really appreciates that we pay an electricity bill here. <laughs> All right, well, that's it. Uh, big thanks to Inez for coming on the show. We had a long break, and we're off for a uh, hiatus, and I can't, I can't help but say, like, what a perfect person to, you know, interview while we're coming back. So big special thanks. Info on any of her upcoming stuff is going to be found below in the show notes. Mm -hmm. And again, just thanks for coming on. Thanks for sticking with us till the end. That's right. And we're going to do a special shout-out to our patrons. Uh, over on Patreon, they help us pay bills. Yeah, they stuck month. with us this whole way, son. And the whole time we we've been slackers and not putting anything out. They they kept kept helping us pay these bills because the studio's still running. We're still kicking. Yeah. Uh, if you want to become a Patreon and help us keep the lights on, uh, going over to patreon.com forward slash a two z bmd. That's patreon.com forward slash a two z bmt. You can support us with a dollar, five dollars, any amount that you want, a one time doma donation or anything like that. Um, it's always appreciated and uh, you know eventually we'll get something cool to you sure and on our next episode we are going to be sitting down and talking with Megan Urban she is the chief of interpretation for the Big Thicket National Preserve it's uh, awesome. we're very excited about it it's so one we've good. had our eye on for a very long time you know how much we love the Big Thicket and you know how much we love the wilderness of this area mm -hmm. and Megan had a wealth of knowledge and she had an answer for every question. We liter had. Yeah, literally, and also wasn't wasn't too stuffy. You know what I mean? It, yeah. I I was kind of concerned that we get a chief of interpretation, not in the national they park might, service. You know, they might like hold their tug on some things. But I won't spoil it for you guys. But this is a little teaser for next episode. We're gonna tell you whether or not there's big feet and uh, the big thicket. So you're gonna Thanks. have to come back next time to see on that. But that's as for now, uh, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next time. Mm. Get in us in the comments. Start a conversation. Send us a text message. Send us a text message. Four zero nine two zero six two nine seven one. Tell us if you think Big Thicket we out here. holds a Bigfoot. Because it may, makes sense. The Big Thicket, big the foot. Big Foot. So you think there could be Big Feet in Big Thicket? You, I would think. I would think. Do you think there's a Bigfoot? No. You don't? I, I don't. Well, come on back next time and we'll find out.